former U.S. men's national team member. New England Revolution, L.A. Galaxy. I don't mean to be jingoistic and patriotic, but I love the fact that we are dominant. Tonight they play Japan in kind of a setup match, right? Why are we so dominant in the Women's World Cup and often so dysfunctional and disappointing in the men's? Uh, well, we have a head start. No, oh, by the way, uh, I, gre- I bring you greetings and praise from the great state of Michigan. I was back there this weekend. My friend John wanted me to tell you when I saw you next how much he loves watching and listening to you, Who? so uh, I have passed that along. Was that Jim Harbaugh who said that? No, 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 no. This is much more important than Jim Harbaugh. Okay. Uh, this is John out there in, uh, in Michigan. Okay, uh, so obviously we have a head start. We have put an incredible amount of, of time and resource and money into our women's soccer, into our uh, our, our female sports in general yes. as a country we value um, female athletes in a way that other countries and cultures don't so we have a head start uh, we have professional leagues all of that kind of stuff meant that we were able to be very good from the start when a lot of the rest of the world wasn't but and, it but is it shrinking it is shrinking that's a good thing that's a good thing it, it makes us more competitive it makes us not not stand on our laurels uh, and I think it's wonderful for the game of soccer and we're gonna see it again this summer as you said a hundred days out from the World Cup uh, this summer in uh, in France, and we will see teams that are the usual suspects. We're going to see a lot of teams and players that we are going to be introduced J- to. So Japan's generally pretty competitive. Australia, aren't they pretty competitive? Uh, yeah, so, you know, you have your usual suspects, as I said, like your Germany's and your Brazil's. Um, and I think right now uh, the team that the U.S. has to fear the most is the host nation, is France uh, right now. This is a very, very good team. But I'm also saying that the United States women's national team, this is the best United States women's national Why? team we have ever because brought. I think in terms of depth, I think in terms of balance, um, I think in terms of competition, obviously they are the defending World Cup champions. It's not easy to defend a World Cup we, no we matter who. We don't have, uh, you know, Mia's long gone, Abby now is gone. So that's, that's the Clint Dempsey, that's the kind of prototype. Whereas the star, the centerpiece, is gone. It's gone. I mean, we still have Alex Morgan, obviously, and, and I would look at someone like Becky Sauerbrunn as a star. We're going to have other stars emerging, but I just think from, from top to bottom in the 11, also in terms of the bench, I think that this is an incredibly potent, if they all stay healthy, an incredibly potent World Cup team that we are bringing. We're going to blow it out, man. We're going to throw the whole kitchen sink at it. 800 hours of coverage, uh, two standalone shows a day. Our set's going to be right down there with the Eiffel Tower behind us, so it's going to be a wonderful summer of soccer. I can't wait to get there. The great legends uh, when it comes to J.P. Della Camera and Ali Wagner uh, leading our broadcast, so we're going to so have a good time. So it starts tonight, by the way, because yep. we have the USA-Japan She Believes Cup match at 7 Eastern on FS1, 100 nights out more than 8 how uh, 800 hours of live coverage and i said this earlier there's two events that deserve more love we pay attention to the world series the little league world series always gets me sure i start caring about 11 year old kids from kansas and the men's world cup we know about messi and ronaldo the women's world cup gets me every time in fact i've told the story to executives here one of the reasons i came here is watching the women's world cup yep. and how fox and fs1 handled it and i said this company's cool now you know i was with you the night in manhattan beach that's right drinking a cold one well that narrows it down hold on okay yeah that the men's dysfunctional <laughs> national team right. broke my heart yep and was knocked out of the world cup can i speak briefly uh, I, I have had um, – uh, I try not to be a fan, but I am a fan of the United States men's national team. I, I'm not rooting for anybody sure. other than that. Is the dysfunction been tempered? We have a GM. Where are we going? Who is our coach? I need to know. Do I, I love about seven of our young players. Right. But USA soccer is wearing me out. I am bullish about the future of the men's team uh, with the new coach, Greg Berhalter, with this core of young players that are going to own the fact that this is a, a, a new era and say, well, it's not going to happen on my watch. We're not going to have another day in, in Manhattan Beach. And as a matter of fact, we'll have another day in Manhattan Beach drinking, but it'll be <laughs> celebratory. And this summer, unlike last summer, you get to watch a World Cup. And look, I don't care if it's a men's, women's, or co-ed naked World Cup. As long as there's a World Cup, that, that is my wheelhouse. I love these summers where I get to do this Groundhog Day of talking about the game that I love each and every day. Obviously, from, uh, from France, it's going to be wonderful. But when you look at this World Cup this summer, if you are an American soccer fan, nay, if you are a, a fan of America, 
you watch this World Cup because for one reason only, we love winners. Well, you got yourself a winner, defending World Cup champions. We didn't even have a team in the World Cup last summer. Not only do you have a team, but you have a team that you can be proud of. It's not going to be easy, but a team that you can stand up each and every day and say, I know that this team has a chance of winning the World Cup, not just showing up. I also think the men's national team has arrogance, uh, sometimes palpable, yet no results. The women have virtually no arrogance and great results. I've always felt like the women's national team is a community and the men's national team has too much dysfunction and feels like disparate parts too often. Yeah, but you're using uh, arrogance as a pejorative. And, and, you know, the people that you talk about that I see you talk about on a daily basis, it's one thing to I, I think that arrogance actually can be an incredible positive if you harness it. That This beautiful arrogance that the best players in the world have. And there's plenty of arrogance on the women's team. And they, they have earned the right to be arrogant. Uh, the, the humility right now when it comes to the men's side, I think, is appropriate. And it better be there because uh, this team right now, from a men's perspective, they got, a, they got a long way to go to win back the hearts and minds of American soccer fans. And I think that they will do it. But as far as this summer right now, you got a team that you can be proud of, a team that, that is bold, that does have a swagger. And, yes, I will, I will call it a beautiful arrogance that's going to be on display this summer. All right. Here's the FIFA Women's World Cup odds. United States, uh, I won't get too much on the odds, but these are the favorites. United sure. States host France. France will do a great job on yep. this. Germany, England, Japan, Netherlands, Spain, Brazil, Sweden, Australia. There's Australia, Japan are the two I've watched the most. So, uh, all right. There we go. It'll be fun. 100, uh, let me see. 100 days. 800 hours of coverage across linear hours. and digital. I'm going to be involved in 797 way, of it. Uh, you were a soccer star. Oh, whoa. That is a, <laughs> hey, if he says that it is on television, exaggeration. It's true. No, you were a, I played soccer, and I tore my ACL playing it. soccer. Just take it. Were you a midi? Were you a, an attacker? I was a striker. Oh, you I'm were. I'm just fast. I was just faster than everybody. Want the glory. Not very skilled. You want the I just glory. ran past everyone. That was my, that was my skill. Right. I heard about fast You were people. a defensive guy, so you I were a, a pest. A you were an annoyance. Old, I, I just... You were physical. I was very physical. You were a physical, annoying player. And and arrogant, yes. <laughs> but likably <laughs> arrogant. I don't know uh, about that. Depends who you ask. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.